Special thanks to Patreon supporter Brick Bros 2016 for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare to Wolfing here bringing you another Minecraft Cold War vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial we're going ahead and building the Westland Wasp. The Westland Wasp is a small 1960s British turbine powered shipboard anti-submarine helicopter produced by Westland Helicopters. It came from the same P-531 program as the British Army Westland Scout and is based on the earlier piston engine Sanders Row Skeeter. It fulfilled the requirement of the Royal Navy for a helicopter small enough to land on the deck of a frigate and carry a useful load of two homing torpedoes. The Wasp sank one ship in combat, seriously damaging the ARA Santa Fe submarine in 1982 during the Falklands War. So yeah, the Westland Wasp, a very interesting little aircraft here. Um, a very kind of, uh, I don't want to say rudimentary, but a very kind of bare bones type aircraft. Uh, very basic and simplistic in design. And uh, apparently... Uh, at least somewhat effective with actually scoring a kill. Um, so yeah, pretty cool stuff uh, with the uh, uh, basically this aircraft, and uh, we'll make an awesome uh, kind of 1960s or early Cold War throughout basically the end of the Cold War uh, British uh, naval helicopter to put onto your uh, ships or anything like that. So overall, pretty interesting build, and I think it'll be a fun one to add to our collection. Again, one of these kind of aircraft that. I don't think a lot of people really know about and uh, is a fun one to you know bring some uh, bring some life to bring some history to and to go ahead and build now before we go ahead and take a look at the vehicle I want to go and give a special links to patreon supporter brick bros 2016 for making this tutorial possible if you guys are interested in supporting the channel where you guys already do feel free to check my patreon page link is always in my video descriptions where you can go and put a small amount to the channel every month and in doing so earn a vehicle request you're choosing it really helps support the work i do and is obviously very greatly appreciated so definitely feel free to check it out if you are interested anyways let's go and take a look here at the aircraft as you can see here we have both the in-flight and landed versions available in this tutorial and uh, it's pretty simple the aircraft sits the same way um, either in the sky or in the air um, so you do have that nice playability with it or kind of versatility with it um so the in-flight version here uh, you can see here we have the landing gear so it's these four wheels located around the aircraft we have the basically cockpit here which um looks like it probably houses a crew of two um judged by the size and shape of it not 100 percent sure entirely though but yeah we'll probably go for crew of two um we have the whole engine here exposed um so basically the whole engine system and we have basically the tail that comes back to our tail rotor the main rotor itself and the main difference you're going to see here between the in-flight and the landed version is just basically the uh, position of the rotors so you can see here we have the rotors weighted so they do tilt downwards uh, for the landed version and then the in-flight version obviously we have the rotors completely extended out anyways uh, that's pretty much it for this overview for the Westland Wasp and let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer alright guys so going ahead and moving into our first layer here we'll be going ahead and beginning with layer 2 now, uh, if you're completely new to my aircraft tutorials, the way I like to start these tutorials, I like to do half on camera, half off. What this means is we'll be building the entire center line of the aircraft and then uh, the right side of the aircraft. This uh, aircraft in particular is completely symmetrical uh, for the most part and any differences will be talked about once we get to those points. Um, however, just know that whatever we do on the center line and then over on the right side will be copied over to the other side. So let's go ahead and get started here. Now the first thing we're going to do for our center line here and one thing to mention is if you do want to build this landed you do want to make sure that this layer here sits two blocks off the ground. We can go ahead and grab ourselves just some blocks that we can easily tell apart from the structure of the aircraft and you can see here uh, we have basically a block and a half space with the top slabs here uh, but basically two blocks is up from the ground is where we want. So the second block level here is where we're going to start our layer. We want to start off by placing down each stone brick top slab followed by an end rod and then a chain coming off that end rod. Going back from the stone brick top slab, I'm going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 dark oak with top slabs back. After we have that done, we're going to go and then place down a dark oak with trap door on the side of this end rod here in the front. We're going to go then place down a fence gate, come off the side of this stone brick top slab like this and open it toward the rear here. And we're going to go and then follow that up and place down a polished dance slate slab. We're going to go and then place down a narrow, polished, or narrow dark oak with fence gate here. And then we want to go and then go to the side here, placing down a iron trap door, coming off the polished dancelight slab, followed by a zombie head, coming off the both sides there of the uh, iron trap door. And then a dark oak fence gate, coming off the iron trap door, and opened up toward it like so. After that, in this section here, we're going to place down two dark oak trap doors on those two dark oak top slabs. And we're going to go and basically do pretty much the same thing we did for the forward landing gear. We're going to place down a dark oak fence gate like so, 
polished andesite slab coming off of it. Then a dark oak fence gate on this side. A iron trap door coming off the polished andesite slab. A zombie head on both sides of that iron trap door. And then a dark oak wood sign or fence gate, sorry, coming off the iron trap door and open up toward it. And after we have that all done there, that is going to basically do it for layer two there for the build. Looking at from above here, this is what you should have for the layer. And once you have that all done, that's going to complete uh, layer number two. With that, let's go ahead and move down to layer number one. All right, guys, so before we go and move into layer one, one thing I did forget to include from layer two here is that this uh, dark oak trap door is going to have a fence gate of dark oak wood that comes off of it. And then we're going to open the fence gate toward the uh, trap door like so. Anyways, after we get to this point, we're going to go then dive down to below this trapdoor that we just placed. And we're going to place down a dark oak wood trapdoor uh, below, below it. And we're going to do the same thing there on both sides, like so. After that's all complete, we want to go ahead and then go to our uh, iron trap doors, And we're going to go, go down, basically from the dark oak wood fence gates here, for each wheel. And we want to go and place down a uh, skeleton or a wither skeleton skull, which is going to be positioned on the ground, like so. Now, if you are building this up in the air, you will need to probably place a block underneath this skull to get this to actually place and to sit properly. Um, but yeah, that's pretty simple stuff. Um, should be easy, able to easily add that. And then we just want to go ahead and add a skeleton skull, which is going to be underneath or coming off the face there of the skeleton skulls. So we could, or the uh, wither skull or the ender dragon, jeez, uh, skull like that. And we should have something that looks like that there for the wheels. And with that all done, that's going to pretty much complete layer one there for the build. And uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and move into our next layer, which will be layer number... All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number three. For layer three to get started with here, we're going to go to this middle space here. And on top of this end rod here, we're going to place down a green terracotta block. After we have that all done, we're going to then place down a like, uh, or sorry, a green stained glass pane coming off this green stained glass block. And then going back from this block here, we can either leave a space of four open for interior space, or we can fill it in with black concrete. Since we're not building an interior for this uh, aircraft, we're just going to fill this in with black concrete to close that space off. Anyways, after that, we're going to then place down a row of one, two, three, four, and five green concrete blocks back, a dark oak top slab, and then two dark oak trap doors after that top slab, like so, going back like that. After that's done, going to the sides here, we're going to place down a black stained glass pane followed by a green stained glass pane to the side here. We're going to then place down a green concrete block, a stripped spruce wood block, and come off the side of this stripped spruce wood block, we're going to place down a trip wire hook. We're going to then place down two green uh, concrete blocks, two white concrete, two mossy cobblestone walls, and then a zombie head here on the end. Now once we have that done, uh, a few things to add is we're going to place down an iron bar on top of this dark oak fence gate here. And in this section right here, we're going to grab our mossy cobblestone walls, and we're going to place down two mossy cobblestone walls on the side of those two green concrete blocks. And once we have that done, that's going to basically wrap up both sides there. And with that, that is going to complete layer number three for the build. With that, let's go ahead and move into our next layer, layer number four. All right, guys, moving into our next layer here, we have layer number four. For layer four to get started with here, we're going to place down a dark oak slab on top of this green concrete block. And then going back from it, we're placing down a row of four black stained glass. We then want to place down a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 green terra or sorry, green concrete blocks back, and then a dark oak wood top slab on the very end there. After we have that all done, we're going to then go back up to the front here. We're going to place down a zombie head here at a very about a 45 degree angle there on top of that black stained glass block. And then going back from the zombie head, we're going to place down one, two, three, and four black stained glass blocks, two green concrete blocks, and then we're going to place down two ladders here on the sides, mossy cobblestone wall, brick wall. Mossy cobblestone wall, and then one and two green stained glass panes back from those walls, just like that. After we have that done, we want to go then take a iron bar, and we're going to place down an iron bar, come off the side of this second black stained glass block from the front there. Anyways, once you take that, or once you get the right side done, take it, flip it over to the left side, and from this point here, we're going to go ahead and move into making this banner here, which will be the design that we're going to have on the side of the aircraft. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the materials we'll need to make those banners that are going to be on the sides there, and uh, I'll see you guys in a sec once I have those materials. All right, guys, so going ahead and moving into making the banners we're going to need for this layer. We're going to need two black banners, two black dye, and four green dye. To start off with, we're going to go into our loom and we're going to take our two black banners and our green dye. We're going to split each one of these banners in half with the green on the bottom half of the banner. So as you can see, just like this, and we're going to go ahead and do this for both of our banners, like so. At this point, we want to go ahead and place our banner back in, or one of the half banners back into the loom, and we're going to go ahead and select the diagonal line that goes across like so. And we're going to go ahead and grab this one here so the line goes up into the right corner and then for the air banner here we're going to do the line that goes up into the left corner so we have these two banners like so last thing to do for these banners is we're going to go and place them back into our looms 
and our black die. Now we want to pay attention here. So the way that the diagonal line is going, so as you can see, it's going up into the top right, and then it goes down into the bottom left. We want to go ahead and take our black uh, concrete here, and we're going to go or our black die, and we're going to select the box in the bottom left corner, so kind of opposite of where this line connects up to. So this banner here, we're going to have the box here in the bottom left corner, and that's going to complete this banner. This banner here, since the line goes down to the right corner, we're going to place down a, or we're going to create a banner with the black square there in the bottom right corner. So we have two banners that basically look like this. Now the first banner here with the line that goes up to the top right is going to be located on the left side of the aircraft. The banner with the line going up to the top left is going to be located on the right side of the aircraft. So it should look like this here on both sides there and that just gives us a little bit more detail there for the uh, window and all that stuff. Anyways, that right there is going to conclude what we have there for uh, the banners, and with that, that's going to conclude layer number four. With that, let's go ahead and move into layer number five. All right, guys, so going ahead and moving into our next layer, we have layer number five. For layer five to get started with, we're going to place down a black stained glass pane on top of this black stained glass block here in the center, and we're going to go back at three glass blocks back from it. We then want to place down an anvil, followed by two of our blocks of netherite, followed by two more anvils, and then a redstone comparator facing that direction like so. We're going to go then go all the way back on the tail here, go back to this dark oakwood top slab, and on top of it we're going to place down a dark oakwood slab, green concrete block back, and then a dark oakwood top slab, come with that green concrete block like so. After that's all complete, we want to go and then go back up to the front and start working our way out to the sides. We're going to place down a black stained glass pane next to this one here, followed by two black stained glass blocks back, and then an air brick wall right here. At this point, we're going to place down a lever on top of this green concrete block facing toward the anvil, followed by a wither skeleton skull come off this block of netherite, a dragon head on top of this mossy cobblestone wall, and then a grindstone coming off the uh, ender, ender dragon head like that, and then a wither skeleton skull coming off the side of this anvil. We want to go and then place down a polished dancelite top slab here. Go ahead and go into our creative menu. We're going to grab item frames. We're going to place item frames here on the sides of the top slab and also a black concrete block in the item frame. If you are on uh, Java Edition, we can go ahead and also take birchwood signs and wrap around the sides here of the top slab like so. Now just note that if you're on uh, the bedrock version, you're not able to place this sign and item frame in the same block space. If that's the case, just go ahead and put the item frame and um, leave the sign off. You can go ahead and place the sign on the right side though, but uh, it'll look something like this here if you're on bedrock. But again, Java, we can place the sign over the item frame. So again, if you're on Java, make sure to utilize that um, ability. Anyways, once we get to this point here, the last thing for us to do for this layer is to go ahead and make some more banners here, which will be going on the sides of the cockpit. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and again grab my materials I'm going to need for the banners, and I'll see you guys here in a sec once I have those ready. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving into making the banners here for the cockpit. We just have two banners to do this time, um, or I should say four, because four different banners in total. Um, but they're pretty simple. Um, I would say easier than the other one we did previously. Anyways, for our first banners here, we're going to place our black banners into our lumen or green die. We're going to go ahead and select the vertical line on the left side and the vertical line on the right side here, and those are going to complete your first two banners. Like I said, pretty straightforward. Our next set of banners here, we're going to be going ahead and doing the diagonal lines. So we're going to do a diagonal line that goes across this way, and then a diagonal line that goes across the other way. So we have these two banners like so. We're going to put each one of these banners back into the loom, and we're going to select the lower uh, third horizontal line that goes across and we're going to go ahead and select this for both of these banners here and we're going to basically create uh, four banners that look like this. Now to place them on the right side here, or sorry, the left side of the aircraft, we're going to go ahead and place the black banner with the line that's diagonal on the right side right here and we want to go and then go back from it and we're going to place down the banner with the line that comes down from the top left hand corner over here on the left side. So like that. And then our other banners, we're just going to go ahead and go to the other side and do the opposite. So banner here and this banner like that. So uh, you basically create your uh, little designs there, kind of gives you a little bit more detail in the cockpit section. But yeah, that's what it should look like there on both sides with those banners added on. Anyways, that right there is going to conclude layer number five for the build. And with that, we're going to go ahead and move into our last final layers. All right, guys, going ahead and moving into our final layers here. We have layers six through seven. These layers here are just going to involve basically uh, finishing off the helicopter and then we'll be moving on to putting the main blades onto the helicopter. So at this point here we're going to go ahead and start off by taking our daylight detectors. We're going to place down two daylight detectors on these two black stained glass full blocks and we're going to go ahead and change these to the night mode like so. After we have that done there uh, we want to go ahead and then place down a stone brick wall that's going to be on top of this anvil like so. And we're going to go ahead and then place down a block 
on those two narrow brick blocks, and we're going to go ahead and then place down levers here, come out the blocks like so. Now we're going to go then use a debug stick, and we're going to go ahead and then take the debug stick and select the facing, and we're going to change this so that the uh, levers are going to be connected up to our stone brick wall, like so. And we're only going to do these three sides because after this wall, we're going to have one and two daylight detectors again turn to the night mode, just like that going back from it. Again, the debug stick can be used with the D with the give command. If you don't have access to the debug stick, then you can go and use some fence gates or something like that instead. But levers here are what works best for this um, uh, basically rotor shaft. After that, uh, we want to go and then place down a stone brick slab on top of it, followed by an end rod coming off all four sides here of that stone brick slab. After that, we then want to go ahead and grab ourselves an iron trap door, and we're going to place down one and two iron trap doors on top of those two anvils. After that, going back to this point here, we're going to place down a dark liquid slab on top of this one, and then coming off this top slab from the previous layer, we're going to place down one, two, and three, uh, or actually, sorry, only two uh, dark liquid trap doors to the side, and then we're going to place down two green carpets, and that's going to be on the right side and the right side only. Coming off this uh, dark oak slab here, we're going to place down a zombie head. And then off to the other side here, we're going to go and grab our end rods. Wither skeleton skull and nerbrick fence post. We're going to place down a end rod. Wither skeleton skull and then two fence posts going up. And two fence posts going down like that for the uh, rear rotor blade. And uh, with that all done, that is going to pretty much complete uh, the basic design here for the Westland Wasp. We're going to go ahead and now move into our two configurations of our rotor blades. So uh, feel free to take a look at the time encoder or the video encoder bar to take a look at uh, the sections and you can skip ahead to whatever section you want we're going to be starting with the in-flight version and um, all that or you can look at this video description as well and find a timestamp to take you to the landed version if you want to do the landed version so uh, just feel free to look at the time codes and uh, be able to skip ahead to wherever you whichever version of this aircraft you want to build but with that let's go ahead and move into the in-flight rotors Alright guys, so going ahead and moving into the in-flight rotors, they're super simple to do. All we're going to do is go ahead and go to these narrow brick, or these end rods, and we're just going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 polished blackstone slabs out to the side here. Same thing right here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and back here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and that's all you really need to do. One thing is if you do have a problem with your iron trap doors opening, you can go and switch them to birch wood trap doors or if you have the debug stick, again you can go ahead and use the debug stick there to manually close them by setting them open to false. And um, yeah, that right there is going to pretty much do it for the in-flight version there. Let's go ahead and move into the landed version. Alright guys, so go ahead and move into the landed version of the rotor blades. For these, super simple, uh, we're going to go to the end rods here and take our polished blackstone and place down one, two, three, four half slabs. We're going to then drop down to three top slabs and then two half slabs like so. And you're just going to go and do the same thing for each one of our rotor blades. So again, our four half slabs, followed by our three top slabs, then our two half slabs like that out to the side. And same thing going to the back here. So just like this. And our last blade here to the side. In four, three, and two. So just like that. And lastly, uh, if your iron trap door does decide to act up due to the daylight detectors and all that stuff, you can go and use a debug stick to close it, saying the open uh, setting to false. Or uh, you can go and replace it with a birchwood trap door or um, whatever trap door you think looks best um, if it uh, does act up and you do not have access to the debug stick. Anyways, that right there, guys, is going to complete my tutorial here for the Westland Wasp for both the in-flight and landed versions. If you guys do uh, end up using this vehicle, I do ask you guys give me proper um, credit for this tutorial. Uh, this can be a thing from a side of the build to link to my channel or this video if this does a pretty social media site. So just be sure I get proper credit for the build. That's all I ask for in doing these tutorials. It helps my channel grow and continues to keep me inspired to keep on posting these types of videos. So as long as you guys give me credit for your free and favorite projects you guys are working on. Um, other than that, again, a big special thanks to Patreon supporter Brick Bros 2016 for making this tutorial possible. And as always, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions. With that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary 204 and I'll see you guys next time.